Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason and you're watching the build on my 1977 Chevrolet C10 square body that we've dubbed Dale. We're going to do a quick update and show you where we are so far. So you guys will recall a while back we made a list of things to do up to a certain point uh, once a lot of the hard work was actually done. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a couple of minutes and talk about where we are so far and we're going to create a new list that updates what we've got to do. So let's jump into it. So when we originally made this list uh, we had already dropped the front end and the rear end and from doing all of that with the kit that I bought from Belltech, we had a couple of little things that we had to figure out. In the rear, there was somebody had already dropped it by using the shackles and a drop hanger in the front. Unbeknownst to me, that hanger in the front was keeping it way too low with the Belltech kit. So we got a new hanger for the front and we got the new shackles in the back. And once we put the box back on it, and everything as you saw in my last video, the stance was still sagging in the rear a little bit. Not quite sure what's happening with that, but that is something that we're gonna, that we're gonna have to tackle. Uh, if you can see the truck behind me, I do have the rear end jacked up so that the truck is sitting level at about 27 inches from the ground to the bottom of the fender lip. And one of the things that I need to look at is that rear spring hanger. Is it stock? Well, yes, I think it is, but I do notice that it's welded in place. So did somebody weld it back in place? Is it a used one? Is it a new one? How long has it been there? Uh, does it have the right drop or the right setting for that spring? If not, we're going to have to address that to gain the roughly two inches more that we've got to come up to get this thing sitting level. Now up front, we did the two inch drop coil springs as well as the two inch drop uh, uh, spindles. So when we did that, that essentially gave us the four inch drop in the front, which is great because the front is sitting exactly where I want it to with the fender just barely uh, right where the top of the tire is. So when we go looking for new wheels and tires, we're gonna wanna make sure that they're the same height as what we have here. So we're going from a 15 to roughly an 18 inch wheel then we've got to make sure we get that proper calculation to know what tire that goes on that that makes up the difference between the two. We didn't really have any issues up front other than a misordered upper control arm. When the ball joint was wrong, we had to put the right ball joint back into it, tear it apart. The idea was that we could, if we wanted to, start cutting the coil spring to help bring that front end down. Uh, we can do that to make it sit level. The problem is, is it would be sitting a little lower than I would want it. I want that look to be that the truck has just as much ground clearance as your everyday car and that it's not going to affect the way the vehicle rides. So, got a couple little issues to straighten up with the uh, suspension. Other than that, we are golden. On the list, I am going to be replacing the tie rods, inners and outers, as well as the idler and pitman. But I want to do that when I have it up on a hoist, just because it's so much easier working on a hoist than laying on your back. When we do that, we get those put in, then we'll be able to take some quick measurements and make sure that the alignment is good enough to get it to the alignment shop. So we'll do the front end, we'll grease it, and then we will get it sent off to the alignment shop. As you can see, I do have the doors back on and that will be coming up in the next video on why we did that and uh, get finished up on the carpet installation or the vinyl floor installation and getting the seat put back into place so that this thing is ready to drive. That, the rear bumper and the tail lights is all we've got left to do to make this thing legal for the road once again. And then we'll be able to take it out to the shop, yank the motor out of it and the transmission and we'll be replacing both of them with something a little more stout. The transmission is going to be a 700R4. And the reason why I decided to go with the 700R4, a lot of guys are going to tell me that they aren't much for performance. However, they are for cruising. And that's what I build all my vehicles for, is cruisers. The benefit of the 700R4 is the first gear has a 308 ratio. So by doing that, you're going to get some really good off-the-line launches as long as you're not breaking things you'll be fine. The 
drive the final drive gear in fourth is like I think it's something like 0.8 to 1 so you should be able to get really good fuel economy out of a engine that we're going to build that's going to give us some power and some performance and still maintain some fuel economy while driving. As you guys know I'll be heading down to Marietta Georgia in August to visit up with United by Trucks and Robbie Purser and the gang down there. We're going to be hitting some truck shows and uh, learning a little bit more about these C10 square bodies. I'll be bringing, I'll be bringing you guys along with me and uh, when we hit those shows we'll also be hitting up Dylan McCool and a few other places along the way. So I hope you guys stay tuned and uh, you stay a part of what we're doing here. If you've missed any of these videos, I'm going to go put the very first video right here so you can go back in the playlist and watch the Dale build right from the day we picked it up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little update and uh, enjoy what we're doing with Dale. And I know that some of you guys in the comments are saying how much you don't like it being lowered. Some of you guys are saying I should be swapping it with a LS. And some of you guys are also saying I should be dropping it further. This is the way it's going to be. This build is going to be for me. And uh, I just hope that you guys enjoy what I'm doing with it. There's not many people out there doing what I'm doing with this square body uh, in a long box. So we're doing a long box drop. Uh, we're keeping a long box and we're keeping the 350 and the original, most of the original drivetrain. So the uh, transmission that's going in it is out of an 84. Uh, so it's not too far off from 77. Uh, basically it will be of the era. So thanks for sticking by me. Thanks for watching this build. Don't forget the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. This week will be on my channel and we do have a guest host. Although it is supposed to be a guest on the show with Grant and I, Grant won't be available. So we do have Corey from Craving Cars filling in for Grant and we're going to have a lot of fun. So I hope you tune into that on Thursday at 7 Central, 8 o'clock Eastern and 9 local time for the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. Don't forget to tell all your friends. Also guys, Old Car Auto Guy merch is available in the first link in the description box below. And if you want to get your very own Focus on the Windshield tee, the OG Old Car Auto Guy or the Dale, the truck t-shirt, you can hit the first link in the description box below and check out one for your very own and support the channel by doing more than just watching these videos. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.